This man, as you see him here, this man, Apostle Paul, Paul Odola, was detained, arrested and detained uh, two days ago, is it two or three days ago, actually, by NAPTIP. And NAPTIP is the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. Uh, they are responsible, a government parastatal responsible in trying to sort out trafficking. So how did this come about? Uh, all thanks to uh, a gentleman called Martin, who is a freelance journalist, who was approached by certain victims, girls, young women, who had told him that over time, over the years, this man had actually forced himself on them and had sex right and he now gathered enough information and sent a, a message to naptic who is in charge of trafficking oh you might ask the question how did trafficking come about uh, about this when you're moving one person from a state one state to another state or from one province to another province that is trafficking so he would deceive you just for sexual reasons and get you to come in from one part of the of the area to another part of the area so uncle solomon said that apostle paul odera was arrested some days ago please kindly watch the video we also have video of apostle michael robo and prophet himself prophet reverend Kasiri isiri Please, can you watch the video? I'll be back. Thank you. I knew that honorable life has demand. So, when the devil came to me and said, I will make sure you fall by fornication. I said, Satan, you lie. And I said, God, if I die, strike me with leprosy. I needed to secure a honorable destiny. No. I needed to secure a honorable destiny. And I got married to my wife as a virgin. But here's some of the stuff, one of the latest, the later of complaint that was written to the NAPTIP uh, 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 Director General uh, by Martin White, uh, who is a journalist by profession, uh, making a formal complaint about Apostle Paul Adola of Dapo Church, which is in, uh, in uh, Abuja. He says some young ladies confided in me that he had them at he 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 raped them at different times he had them at different times and raped them they want justice and hence they are approaching nothing now these are very serious allegations and these are not just allegations that are by the way but these are allegations that i myself can vouch and actually believe that Paul Odola or Paul Odula, right, is actually the culprit. This is a man who, over the years, he had so much disengaged himself from biblical truths and embraced the life of a rock star, the life of a celebrity, where he lived like one. Minister must be pure, he must be clean. In Isaiah 52, verse 11. He said, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. They that bear the vessels of God must be clean. He's married with adult children. Uh, and his marriage is in shambles. His wife, appeal for divorce. She's afraid of his life, uh, of her life rather, because she's he's been threatened, abused and everything. I think I'm going to do a whole lot, a whole different uh, video around that. If possible, get to interview her. Her name is Tina Odola. Just to tell us the truth, you know, uh, what's been going on. But he's in the news recently because he came to dispute the fact that Dr. Abel Damina has said that he was part of the those who ordained and anointed Dr. Paul Enenche to become a pastor. Now, all these guys partially grew up in the city where I'm, where I'm from, you know, so I can relate to them in a sense. So he came 
Abel Damina has said he was part of that ordination, laying hands on him. So he came out to, the, to actually said, no, he was not the one who ordained him. So I don't know much about that. So that's their own, you know, things to deal with. Uh, but I know Abel Damina has been there quite a long time, way before uh, yeah, Dr. Paul and NJ came up. So the thing is, when he came out and began to dispute Abel Damina, which he has a right to, to do so, because I don't know the facts of that issue, I was like, hey, hold on. Isn't this the same guy that about four or five years ago, girls were... There's this particular girl, especially, who came to me, report him as being somebody who is an adulterer. He comes to South Africa to preach and teach, and he has so many girls that he just sleeps around with. He goes to church, preach, and leave the church with cash, a lot, whole lot of money. You know, so a seed type, false pastor. So... Away from the issue of that is happening between him and Abel Damina and Paul Inenche, I don't, I haven't really researched that that much. I still have to take time to do, to do that to get some sort of truth and facts from it. But when I saw him speaking, I was like, this is the same adulterer. Because I remembered when she got in touch with me, I even got in touch with him, telling him, look, hey, this is what I found out. I have still have WhatsApp messages around it. And then he became a, he became a like. Uh, uh, threatening, you know, dismissive and all that kind of stuff. Who do you think you are anyway? Now, I have conversations and I know that he has girlfriends from Johannesburg to Durban to Pretoria. And I have conversations, you know, between him and this girl. And I was actually really asking the girl, this girl in particular, they almost came close to getting intimate. <laughs> Let me just share with you. So this is what she said to me. In Durban, never. But I wouldn't lie. We almost had a sexual encounter. But my cousin was around as I couldn't travel alone. My parents were very strict. You kissed and he touched your body. That's good that you were disciplined. You know? So I said she was disciplined because she didn't do that. Then she said, no. Eh? Uh, we had phone sex, rather. As said, I always had somebody with me. He would steal a baby kiss only. He's, he's never seen me naked. So that's one of the girls who came close to, outside of the other girls who he had had all over. And online, obviously, they shared pictures that are just totally inappropriate. And this is one of the photos that he sent her. Right. This is a pastor. Sending this photo. He's still preaching and teaching all around. To a very young girl. Who was like 19 then. This is Paul Odola. The picture. Explicit, explicit photo. There are other intimate photos. That is not just appropriate to show here. That he had sent her. And he actually requested and asked for photos too. These are part of the conversations between them. He said, somebody can't do without me. Please. Then she said, please leave me alone. I beg you. I can see that you were thinking about me. That's him. I caused the day I met you. So that's what she said. This was what? 10 years ago. Somebody else is speaking. and not my Tandio. That's what he said. Who has hacked her FB. So he wanted to, you know, he just wanted to get enticed out. So there's a whole lot of conversation going on between them and this and, and all of that kind of stuff, right? So my take is this is the same man, right? Who is standing at the pulpit and declaring truth. This is the same man who is preaching and teaching all over. Right? So, these are 
facts here. As somebody who is just seeking the limelight, somebody who had confronted and said, look, hey, this is what this girl is telling me. This is the truth that she's, this is what she has sent to me. She also sent me audio between them. But these guys, the stuff that they do, they never stop doing it. They keep doing it over and over again. Paul, he's going to see this video. His wife. I'm going to do another video just around his wife. What his wife went through. How she actually had to seek for divorce. How the threats that she had received. If you, that man is, is not okay. He's not supposed to be pastoring, preaching, teaching at all. When I spoke to him about this issue, and the way that he spoke to me, you will not believe that this is a man of God. You, you like, who do you think you are anyway? You know, somebody who is very aggressive, somebody who it seems like there's something wrong with his with him mentally it's up but the truth is this man is not who he claimed to be he's affiliated with he's he, he's he there's quite a lot of stuff that he's he, that he had going on in south africa with girls So don't, I don't see how, where he got the audacity to stand as a man of truth. I don't see how that man should be believable in any way. In any way. He must come out and tell his congregation and everybody his sexual escapades in South Africa. Fresh, if he is indeed a man of God. He needs to repent. And he goes around. And, and the sad thing is people still follow him. And now he's still trying to chase some clouds and all of that. And, and things that, that he, he he's okay. He's a man of God. No. Far from it. That man has fallen from grace. He shouldn't be pastoring. He shouldn't be traveling. Nobody should believe him. He has no audacity. He should go get another job. Matter of fact. He's been engaged and dwelling in sin for too long. What is in this sexual immorality thing that my generation is believing like mad people? What is in this thing? If I was not on that side before, then you can tell me stories. I walked that road. I did those things. And Jesus showed me mercy. What is it that you are doing as if you are helpless? See, I, I, I fell into immorality. Oh, God, you, with your tongues... A young couple came to see me recently where I'm doing ministry, where God has privileged me to gather people, as sent by our Father in the Lord. And as the lady began to speak to me, she was broken, almost tattered. The brother is serving under a pastor. The pastor was busy having sex with his fiance in the same church. Same church. One that called himself a prophet. He started using church money to fund his sex with prostitutes. When he could no longer control himself. You know that we've taught you here that it will begin by an act of your will. Then a demon will take over. He started bringing the prostitute to his matrimonial home. A pastor, the church has closed now. In my city. What is it in sexual immorality? A guy is doing tongues. Leg, 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 leg. He said masturbation is his weakness. Oh God, I looked at pornography at the age of 10. I battled, battled. But when I got serious with God, Omelekate, which Jesus did you meet that he did not affect your affections and your appetites? 
Which Jesus did you meet? Jesus does not only change what you do. Jesus begins to affect what you want to do. It changes. It changes. It changes. He begins to affect it. Such that your appetites now come under the government of a king. Certain things are no longer allowed in your space. The last metaphor. He gives the metaphor of a disciple who became obsessed with this world. Paul was the one that cried out. He said, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. You see, I love scriptures. Shall you know that Paul could have said, having loved this world? Eh? He wanted to show us that the problem with Demas was that he lost sight of that continuing city. He became obsessed with the present world. Forgetting that another world is coming. Another kingdom. What is the goal of immorality? What is the purpose the devil wants to achieve? Romans. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 first. Then Romans 1 from verse 21. I want to show you the two things the devil wants to achieve that makes him sponsor deception and implant immorality in the souls of men. Number one is to bring them into delusion. The Bible said, and for this cause, God shall send strong delusion and they should believe a lie. So when this thing happens, God will allow for these people to become deluded. And so lies will become their doctrine. So the reason for this immorality is to provoke delusion. Hear what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 2, 11, 2 12. When these spirits come, they blind men. They say, now we have not received. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we should know the things which are freely given to us by God. So the spirit of God helps you to know the things of God. But when you don't have the spirit of God and the spirit of the world takes over, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 and 4, hear what the spirit of the world does. They said, but if our gospel be healed, it is he to them that are lost, whom the God of this world, verse 4, whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. So when people come under the influence of the spirit of the world, they become blinded and then they believe a lie. So there will be great delusion in the souls and in the minds of men. And this delusion will be so much that for some, a whole nation will be deluded. Now, when I'm teaching you about the judgments of God, there are five cadres of judgment. The last cadre of judgment is when the nations are judged. You know, when the new Jerusalem appears, the overcomers will be invited into the new Jerusalem. But there are others who will be in the nations. The Bible said the leaves that will grow in the streets of the new Jerusalem shall be for the healing of the nations. So there are certain nations that will pass the test of the judgment of God. They will be included in what God is doing. But there are other nations like Sodom and Gomorrah that will be completely wiped out from existence. And so this delusion can affect individuals, systems, and nations. These spirits are that powerful. So the reason you see immorality everywhere is not about feeling, it's not about pleasure, it's so that you become deluded. You become blind to the things of God. You now believe a lie. And then you start living a lie. And at the end of the day, that's why I told you, when you live like this, don't make the mistake of assuming that before you die, you will repent. That is also delusion. You will live this lie and you will die in it. You will die because it's a programming. You are already blinded. 
you have become vain in your understanding that's what prosperity that's what immorality wants to do to make you vain vain you cannot receive the things of god you can't understand the things of god you can't participate in the things of god in first corinthians 2 14 it said the natural man received not the things of the spirit of god neither can he know them he said they are spiritually designed ephesians 1 17 and 18 he said do not walk as the gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind he said these ones have their understanding darkened so they can no longer participate in the commonwealth of israel so when you think any immorality you do is about your feeling and you ask god to forgive you you don't know where you are you are in the last days and what the devil is doing is to sponsor immorality to darken the souls of men and to make men live a lie this is why we fight to be pure this is why we battle it we preach it with aggression we leave it with aggression because if you don't leave it you will be exonerated my brothers and sisters number two why does the devil sponsor immorality through deception romans 1 verse 21 to 28 hear what the bible says it said because that when they knew not god that when they knew god i beg your pardon they glorified him not as god neither we are thankful hope you are seeing the consistency because these ones that bring this deception they come as christ he said many will come and say i am christ so the first thing is to take the place of god in your life it can be a man it can be a system it can be a government it can be an institution anything that wants to take the place of god in your life is a weapon the devil will use to delude you he said this ones they knew god but they did not glorify him as god why because another christ has taken over and as they did not glorify him of god he said they were not thankful and so they became vain in their imagination you see the delusion again and the foolishness of, and in the foolishness of their heart he said they were darkened verse 22 he said professing themselves to be wise they have become fools the word fools used here is morons they have become morons they are beside themselves they are out of their minds they are saying things that are outrightly foolish but they can't see it they have become morons and so there are many nations today that are dominated by morons no matter how big they think they are the bible said they are morons because they are deluded they are beside themselves when you find people carry placards and they are fighting to change their gender they are fools that's what the bible said when you find people carry placards and they are contesting that abortion should be legalized no matter how exalted that nation appears in the eyes of men they are fools you don't understand the times that nation now should be a place of the convergence of warriors men who can stand and have enough power in the spirit to look at darkness and to judge those spirits so that the minds of men can become sane at a place to go look for greener pastor that's a warfare ground where the souls of men are being traded and you say it's a place for greener pasture what pasture you don't have understanding of the times if god is not sending you there that place is a risk i can tell you today by all of there are many people today they are subscribing to home lessons private education you can't allow a, a, a lawyer went to to his to school of his child and he, he found some of the books they were giving them to read children of seven years and the books they were teaching them they claim it is sex education and they were teaching them they were unveiling pornography outright pornography to them and encouraging them to practice and the man was reading it i said how can you expose my child they were stopping him. he said why are you stopping me from reading it if you have given it to my child who is seven years old why are you ashamed that i'm now reading it out because they know what they are doing deluded generation they said they profess themselves to be wise they said but they have become fools they have become morose go to verse 23 they said and have changed the glory of god 
the incorruptible glory of God into the image like to corruptible man to birds to four-footed beasts and to creeping things is trying to give you the progression of idolatry because idolatry if you study it it began with this worship of creeping objects from creeping objects to four-footed beasts men men were worshiping things that creeped like serpents they now migrated to things like cows they now migrated to worshiping men and that's why somebody's skin color is his god he doesn't know why everybody wants to bleach they don't know why it's the spirit of the age somebody wants to gym so that he can turn his body to his idol he doesn't know what he is the spirit of the age when self becomes god know that that person has entered the full gestation period of idolatry he has migrated from creeping objects to four-footed objects to man so man is his god himself is his god it's called deception instead of worshiping god men worship snake hope you know that the symbol of medicine is a serpent the wisest men of old they drew their inspiration from creeping things those were the things that defined their lives and their inspiration and then they came to four-footed beasts and then man started exalting himself as god shalom child of god welcome back my people new subscribers thank you so much for joining me returning once appreciate your support Thank you so much. I'm grateful. You guys have watched the video. I don't even know where to start. You know, these are pastors and prophets. I don't just get it. Some of them will be preaching on the pulpit and be doing something else. They are preaching. That one is just do what I said. But don't, don't just follow my footstep. Don't follow my footstep. Just follow my, my teaching. You see? When they are preaching, it be as if they are not preaching for themselves. They are not preaching to themselves. They are only preaching for the members. If it's innocent, I don't know. If it's not innocent, I don't know. So it's allegation, you can see. Me, I don't know. All I know is that the, all these times why I brought this message of um, Pastor Michael Robo's message and the one of Reverend Cassili for those that are passing through the situation to learn and I believe that God will help us. If you are in that category, if you are a pastor, and you are still mingling that kind of sin, may God give you the grace to overcome it. It's very sad and very painful. This video is, is already long, so I believe that anybody that wants to learn, will learn. Okay? These pastors, many of them are doing things that you don't just get it. Many of them are committing all sorts of things. Why some of them are good? I want to appreciate those that are good, still preaching the gospel. That is why I normally say, preach Christ. preaching Christ is very easy. Anybody can preach Jesus. But everybody cannot practice Christ. Be ye holy for I am holy. As a preacher, the first thing that must die in you is your flesh. If your flesh is not yet dead, then your preaching will never, it will never work. Because you'll be having lots of temptation. Apostle Paul says, things I hate doing, I find myself doing it. As a preacher, you have to be crying unto God, help me, O God, to deal with my flesh. Subdue flesh. Show me mercy, O God. Because this is the man, this is the, the, the distant people normally used to de Delilah. That is Delilah for you. That part of their life is just confirmed Delilah. A preacher will be in the pulpit and be preaching. The next thing will be, I'll be looking at someone. I know now. No. Or after preaching, Piam, you go and meet that one. Sisters in the church can no longer stay with pastors now in the same office and comfortably sit there safely. No. They must not them. Is that Christianity? No. I even wonder how a pastor that is knocking members will go and be and claim that it's manifesting on the Holy Ghost. No, how? No, how? I just wonder because when you commit that sin, sin of immorality, you're fresh. If there is Holy Ghost in you, you must have conscience, it will even leave you safe. 
Be ye holy, for I am holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Down to 17. It's a command. Be ye holy. Then how can you stain yourself? After staining yourself as a preacher, you still crank that up, poop it, and the one holy go to flow. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. So please, as a pastor, deal with your flesh first. Deal with it. Many of these pastors are committing a lot. They are committing nothing anyhow. Eh, it's temptation. It's devil's work. Yeah, really? Devil's work. Some of them even have a wife. Now look at this one now. Look at where how you find yourself. Where he find himself. What will make you to you know the you know, I don't, oh my god. What will make somebody a preacher, a preacher of the gospel? To knock, to the center of knocking, and even knocking the one off by force. Knock by force. Now, I don't just get it. Well, whatever. Me, I don't know. I want to appreciate uh, Uncle Solomon for this. Thank you, sir. Yes, so, he's well, oh. I, oh, my goodness. This is terrible. Well, may God help him and show him mercy. If, the, if this is true, may God show him mercy and rescue him back to him. So thank you guys for listening. I want to appreciate my brother, brother, Apostle Mike, Mike himself, Michael Robo. God bless you, sir. More grace for greater manifestation. And I also want to appreciate Reverend Cassilius. Thank you, sir. More grace for greater manifestations. It shall be well with you guys in the morning. It shall be well with you in the afternoon. It shall be well with you in the evening. May God preserve you. May God protect you. May God give, give you grace. It shall be well with you. You will not enter this temptation of knocking. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, stay away from this. The Bible says you should flee. It does not say you should walk. Oh, no, it says you should flee. As a preacher, as a Christian, as anything, please flee. If you have not married, flee. If you are married, don't be knocking somebody's wife. Don't be knocking somebody's uh, husband. It's a sin before God. It's a sin. It's not more now. People are doing it. It's not. It's common. It's common doesn't mean make it right. Okay? People are knocking anyhow. You must you knock? No, tell me now. And you say you're a Christian. You must you knock? Say no to that now. Even if people are knocking, must you knock? At least remember your creator. And say no to knocking. You go online and go and be knocking. Whether you knock online, you knock on, on, uh, offline, you knock anyhow, you knock through phone, knocking is knocking. Oh. But some of you will say, no, I did not knock the person. I did not knock him. We did not knock. We only, yeah, we only did it on, on, on phone. You did it on phone, it's knocking. Oh. Whether you meet the person on social media, knocking is knocking. Please, say no to knocking. Okay? It's the same before Almighty God. Be ye holy for I am holy. May God give us the grace to say no to that. In the name of Jesus. Now look at his church now. How would the church cope? His wife allegedly left and opened her, her, her own ministry. Just imagine. It's well oh, Church goes on. May God see us through in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that doesn't know the man, he's actually a pastor who was trained by Dr. Ebed Damina. All of a sudden, he came out some weeks ago. And claim that and deny ever that mean, and uh, for now he want now want to be a nature son, Paul a nature son. He want Paul a nature to be his father, new father in the Lord. He came out with all sorts of allegation on the table that mean, the table that mean is not the one that gave birth to Paul and nature's church as ever that mean claim. In fact, that ever that mean told him to lie, to lie and lie against Paul and nature. He said also something. I will put the link of the video in the description for YouTube so you understand what you are saying. So we are still arguing that issue now. The, the matter is still ongoing before this incident happened. He even threatened with lawsuit that he has contacted his lawyer that anybody that wrote any, that write anything against him on media is going to pick the person up. Now look at them just get it. My prayer that God will see him through. That's all. This is not my will. I don't wish him to, to delete there or to have problem. I pray that God will show him mercy. If he's guilty, let God show him mercy and uh, see him through and rest restore him back in Jesus' name.
Amen. See guys next time. Sharon, remove your hand from evil. Learn from this. Say no to evil. Say no to wickedness. Say no to, to self. Selfishness. Never you buy the hand that fed you. So let me leave you with this one. Bye.